Hello there dear viewer, now if you were looking for a video about connecting USB thumb drives and also card readers to an iDevice with a USB-C port, then you need to find another video because this one is all about lightning adapters and lightning ports. Don't want to waste your time and I do hope that you find what you're looking for. So what I'm going to test in this video is a 2 gigabyte thumb drive. It's really old. It's a Lexar one. And then I'm also going to try out an old um, Del Taco card reader. So it can read M2 cards and then it can also read uh, micro SDHC cards. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Huck. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. I have just updated my iPhone 6s with iOS 13. Why would you do that, Jacob? You always tell us not to do that. I'm doing it so you don't have to. I'm testing it out for you and for myself because I wanted to peer review everything else I've seen a lot of other people do. I love this one from Gaz Williams who is also a fellow music producer and I love this video because he just got so excited he decided to run out into his backyard and just do this video. He does a test with a type of card reader that have multiple slots where you can connect any type of card so I'm gonna link to that one. Whoa! Now we're gonna need a mic stand for this because Right, so let's get this show on the road. This is an iPhone 6s. I updated it with iOS 13 uh, last night. I don't know if anything is gonna bug out on this thing because I haven't tested anything except from this right here. Now, in order to get these two connected to this, we need a lightning to USB 3 adapter. Now, the reason to why you need to use this one in particular and not the regular CCK one is because this one has a power port and you need to connect a charger to it to get this to work because the iDevice needs more power in order to run these devices. If you don't have power, you won't get this to work. Next, we're gonna try with the Lexar jump drive. So I'm just gonna push this in to the USB port and then we just connect this package to the phone. Now it's charging and it's connected and in order to access this attached jump drive here, we have to go through the files app. And so first, I'm just gonna turn on screen recording so that I can show a nicer picture of this. There we go, it's screen recording. So we open up the files app and what do you know? Right there it is, Lexar. We're gonna open this one up and there we go. Now, I wanna try doing something. I wanna try to move a photo from uh, my camera roll into this thing here. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna choose a picture that one of my viewers sent me that he made on his iPad, which is really cool. So we need to copy this picture, and we can do that by holding down like this, and then choose copy. Now, all we need to do is to go into the Lexar drive and hold down like this, paste, and what do you know? There it is. Let's open up the picture and there it goes. I don't know if you saw that, but it took a little bit. It was a kind of a delayed response. And that's one of the things. If you're using an older drive with this, then you know the transfer speed might be very, very, very slow. So if you're using something like this to transfer maybe video files or audio files, something that is way bigger than photos, then you might have an issue. You know, slow transfer times can really kill your workflow. Old thumb drives, just gonna be slow. But if you're using something like an SSD drive that Gaz Williams does in his video, then that's gonna be quick. Here's another problem that Gaz Williams also points out in his video, and that is there is no safe way to actually unload the thumb drive from the system. So this is like nothing. If I long press or, or do anything, it's not, it's not gonna do anything. I cannot safely eject the drive from the system. It's something you can do on PCs and also Mac computers. You know, you just right click on the drive and then just choose eject. And when it's done, it's safe to remove the drive. So just make sure that when you're disconnecting this, because all you can do is just disconnect the whole package here, when you're disconnecting it, make sure you're not transferring any files. Make sure it's not during a file transfer. Otherwise, you'll get corrupted data. You might even corrupt the drive. So I'm just gonna disconnect this thing, do that. And we're gonna try to um, make this work. So this is the Del, Del Taco card reader. It can read M2 cards and SDHD cards. So I'm just gonna connect this thing here. And I'm gonna connect this thing here. And let's see what happens. 
No, we're not. Oh, there we go. It says phone card. There we go. So we have access to that thing right there. That's good. Let's disconnect this thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the M2 card here and I'm going to switch it out for a micro SD card. This is a big one. It's a 64 gigabyte one or big, it's bigger. And then we're just going to push this in here. So, you know, that's what you're working with when you're working with these uh, lightning devices. It's, it's great. I love having dongles. Yes. Yes. We're going to make billions of dongles. Billions of dongles. Yeah, I know, I know. Don't complain, Jacob. You're choosing to work on this platform. I'm using the iPad and iPhone because it's really nice to have such a portable thing with me when I want to edit my videos and do my music and everything. But, but I wish there was a card reader inside the iPad or inside the iPhone. So here we have the Taco drive connected to the uh, USB 3 to Lightning connector. What was that? I don't know. And then we have an SDHD card in here. So I'm gonna connect that package and let's see what happens. Does it load it up? There we go, media. We go in here and let's try to paste that picture again. Yeah, no problem. So that's basically how you're getting this to work. This is good, Apple. You did good here. It should have been there a while ago, but this is great. Now, for those of you who might be complete beginners when it comes to, you know, connecting external USB devices to an iDevice, then I have two videos at least that I really feel that you need to watch because these two videos will teach you everything you need to know about connecting external USB devices to lightning port equipped iDevices. You will learn how much power you actually have to work with and also how to connect everything up and why you should be using original Apple adapters. You can find the links to these two videos at the end of this episode. You can also find it up in this card and down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support this channel, you have, you know, these links here and um, go check out my music because Anything you haven't heard before is always new to you. And that is reason enough to check out my music, especially my Mellow album. You can find that on, uh, well, if you go to jakobhack.com slash music, you'll find my Mellow album um, in a link collection where you can go to whatever, these are Amazon music if you are stuck in the 90s. You can also find it on Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, go check that out. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. I didn't think this would work, okay? A little while ago, Bo from Bo Beats contacted me and said, hey, aren't you happy, Jacob? Uh, iOS 13 means that you're gonna be able to use hard drives with, um, you know, with this thing. And it's true for SSD drives, it seems, from Gas's video. It linked in the description, so go check that out and give him some love. Um, but I told Bo that that probably would never happen it, because the, the lightning port is unable to give out the right amount of milliamps to even power a system like that when it comes to hard drives. And um, I was wrong. I was wrong. Um, it works with SSD drives, worked with SD card readers, it works with uh, thumb drives. However, I did try to connect two di different Western digital drives. One made for the computers, and it turns out that it's not class compliant, and that's why it doesn't work. And so no surprises there. But what did surprise me was the mobile Wi-Fi drive that I purchased, that wouldn't, it wouldn't connect. It wouldn't connect. The thing that is made for mobile, it will connect through Wi-Fi, it will connect through Wi-Fi, through an app. But when I tried to connect it directly to the USB here, it turns out not to be, I don't know, not class compliant or maybe it needed too much power, but it didn't work. So the mobile drive did not work with my mobile phone. It's really expensive too.